my name is Joanna. I was born in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I came to New York to work for a year for this big law firm, and then I had to go back. But I fell in love with the city, and I was already taking courses at ICP, which was right across from the street from the law firm. But I was already taking courses in Sao Paulo as well. So after working for so many years, I decided to just, just take a sabbatical. Like, why not? I can be in New York for one more year studying photography, and then I'll go back and res resume my activities. But I didn't. <laughs> Well, I think like every photographer, you start with street photography. So that's what I was doing in Sao Paulo, street photography. And New York is the place for street photography. So that's what I started doing in New York as well. And then I took a class with Harvey Stein at ICP, street photographer. With street photography, you try to tell a story in one single frame, but what I what I wanted to do is not to just capture a moment or document a moment, but create a moment, make a photograph instead of taking a photograph. That's why I think I, I came from the outside to the inside, so I could have control over what I was doing. And I started working with projections and I wanted to create an illusion. So what I was, gonna, what I was doing was I'll, I'll take a picture of a kitchen and then I would project that picture in another kitchen to create an illusion. So you'd see two different kitchens, but you didn't know which space was real, which space was uh, not real. And I started to notice the harsh, the, the very well-defined shadows that the projector light would create. So in one of those sessions, I, I stopped doing what I was doing and I just started to photograph all the shadows in my apartment. So I, pick objects and create shadows and only photograph the shadows. That's when the blueprint started. Because I have small pictures like Polaroids of all the shadows in my apartment, of the objects in my apartment, but they didn't make sense separate. Like I, I need to link them somehow. And that's where the floor plan came, because the link between those objects was the apartment. It is pretty much like playing with the photo album of my family albums in my childhood. I was always rearranged the family album always. It was something I would like to do. Like, but I had a physical space that I was placing images here and there and creating stories in my mind and trying to translate those stories in the photo album. But now what I was doing is the same. It's curating images and placing them within that lines and trying to tell a story how in a collage way like we use like 80 different images to tell one thing. Shadow is the absence of light so the object is blocking the light from the surface and the reason I do that comes back to that explanation to the to Thing that I want you to have a feeling what it feels like to be in that space, not to see what it looks like. For example, I don't know, coffee maker. You will see in my images if somebody has the BLT, the Italian coffee maker, I'm gonna use that because I have that and it's an object with an interest design. So I'm interested why all the homes have this coffee maker now. I want to tell how we're different, but how we're all the same too. The key point for the blueprints is that to me they are portraits. You're not seeing a face, you're not seeing the likeness of the person or the family, but they are portraits through their objects. The way I work, it's, um, it's very, there's no beginning and end, so because I was working with projections that came to the blueprints, and then the blueprints came to another work that's collage and or cutouts. So I was starting to cut the shadows and scan it and reusing the materials. So reusing what I was already working with. So from that, uh, I create what I could, what I call the cutout works, recortes. 
Portuguese and I print the shadow with shadow and then now it doesn't matter where it came from it's not related to a person anymore so I use the shadows of all the houses or whatever and I just cut the shadow and I put it in a uh, scan and I scan them sometimes I use the shadow sometimes I use the leftover paper uh, to create something else so when I was doing going to homes and photographing the blueprints I always noticed a flower a cut flower uh, in uh, that house and I love flowers so they're pretty and poetic so I was always taking shadows of the flowers too. actually the very first shadow I did was a tulip, tulip in my house and and then I started to think about how shadows and flowers are ephemeral, they don't last. And I wanted to give a permanence to, to the shadow and the flower, and that's how the plastic flowers don't die started. And what I'm doing now is basically taking uh, photographs of shadows of cut flowers and translating that and laser cutting that onto black acrylic. So it's basically a shadow that it's not, that doesn't need a light source anymore to exist. And it's a flower that it's not gonna die anymore. To me, you can say that the plastic flowers, some I say this is not photography, but to me it is photography. It's just that the medium I'm using to show it, it's acrylic, it's plastic, but it always started with a photograph. And the photograph, it's still there, even though you're not seeing it anymore. And I think there's space for me to do that now in photography that probably a few years ago I couldn't do it.